This is DJ Dr. Comedian here with um, our friend Greg Goldstein mm -hmm. from the station. How are you doing, Greg? I am doing well. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about you and um, where you you know where you come from and what you've been doing. Well, up until I was six, I grew up in Forest Hills, Queens, in New York. Mm -hmm. Then I moved with my family to Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Um, where I currently reside. Uh, yeah, that's my background. <laughs> yeah. Where did you go to high school? I went to, uh, two high schools. I went to Cherry Hill East, mm -hmm. and I went to Malberg, which oh, is yeah. where they send the bad kids. Yeah, the bad kids. The, the kids bad that kids. question... The kids that question things, right? Yeah, they question authority, exactly. Oh, wow. So that so was bad. a lot of fun. So bad. Stay away from me. Yeah. I was Nobody should ever do that, ever. Never ever, in my ever, presence. ever. Yeah. Nope. Uh, so uh, so after, you, after you got out of those places... Um, <laughs> bad kid school? The bad kid school. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun being a bad kid, isn't it? Well, it's just more hanging around other bad kids because they're so damn funny. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. So, um, have you, uh, what, what are you doing in um, Camden County College? I'm not sure. <laughs> You're not sure. You're not sure. I'm uh, studying. Currently, I'm just taking uh, Spanish 202. And uh, intro to electronic media. I'm hoping to get a job. Uh, at, I've been looking at. I've been looking to move to Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. and I was hoping to get a position with the NPR affiliate WABE. Hmm. But I want to. I have experience in broadcasting. Obviously, I'm here, and other relevant fields. But I want to kind of fill in the gaps where I might be lacking, as far as uh, qualifications. Yeah. Um so are you what uh what degree are you aiming to get? Um, I was going for a communications degree, but I've decided to forego getting a degree and just use the experience, the relevant experience they they reference in um applications and combine it with again just further knowledge. That's not a bad idea. Yeah, hopefully it's not. <laughs> you never know until you realize it's a bad idea, or it's not. Yeah, exactly. You find out. <laughs> you find out later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so don't panic now. It's right. too early. It's too early to panic. <laughs> Is there such a thing? Oh. Too early no. to panic? I don't know. I I'll see. I'm gonna maybe I'll look back and be like, dang, why didn't I panic while I had the chance? For it was too late. Good question. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So um, tell me a little bit about. Uh, your work at WDBK. So, um, I started at WDBK about six and a half years ago, and yeah, so I'm current. My official title is student director, which means I'm kind of second in command because uh, I have a ton of experience here. I've been an on-air DJ. Um, I have a certificate in audio recording and engineering, so I have a good knowledge and background of, you know, how things work and things like that. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, would you, like, uh, yeah, so I've heard that you do uh, stand-up comedy. That's Both right. I, yeah. I actually, you know, I think I forgot to send it, but I had a recording to play on air. Oh, yeah. Let me see how quickly I can find it, if I can. Because I think it might be in my Google Drive, which would make it very hey, easy to access. Hey, if it access. is, then we, could, then we could play it after after the interview. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I first tried stand-up about... Yeah, I don't know where it is. Oh, well. Yeah, we can always play it next week. I'd yeah. be happy to. Yeah, I tried it in the summer of 2015 at an open mic. Then I did not try it again for almost two years. And so I think around like March of 2017, I started doing it at open mics more regularly. Yeah. 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 So, um, what inspired you to do it or 
Um, I guess my de- my delusion that I'm funny. Your, your delusion? <laughs> yeah, or it's a your delusion. Your intuition. Uh, both. And so, are you saying your intuition is deluded? I think so. Deluded with delusion. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I mean, as long as you're enjoying it, and yeah. As long as other people are enjoying it, yeah. And let your delusions run wild. Yeah, exactly. And it's quite uh, therapeutic. All most, not most, but a lot of my humor and my act centers around my uh, misfortunes. <laughs> Your misfortunes. Yes. Like, the first time I did stand-up, it was less than a year after the devastating loss of my grandmother. And that was a lot of my act was about that. Mm -hmm. And it was very uh, dark. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then I have, like, a list of defects and phobias and things like that (laughs) that often inspire my humor and my jokes and see how I can make people laugh at negative situations <laughs> those are the most funny or fun to laugh at you know exactly that to me is if you can get people to laugh at dark stuff that's cool i think uh, oh yeah oh mm-hmm. yeah absolutely <laughs> so um what do you think uh one of your darkest jokes that you can tell on the radio is um let's see <laughs> Well, the one that... The first time I did stand-up, it didn't get a lot of laughs. And I forgot... My friend was reminding me recently that I was doing it for him in his room. And he was dying laughing. (laughs) For some reason, it didn't go over well uh, on stage. But basically, it was about... It's not even that funny. I wish I could revisit it. But it's about how after my grandma died, like... So, my grandma died, and then I found out about two hours later that it, that I had epilepsy, because I had my first grand mal seizure, like, right after she died, suddenly. So, it was a crazy night, and so I had this bit about how, like, you know, I was upstairs, she was downstairs, I was, you know, passed out, she was dead, like, I was, you know, I woke up inside an MRI machine and had a panic attack, she was still dead, and it was like this back and forth where I was doing this, and then it just keeps cutting back to how she was dead, and so I'm describing it as like a bonding experience that I had with my grandmother, because we were on different floors of the hospital. That's very interesting timing, wouldn't you say? It certainly was. (laughs) Yeah, so you were close with your grandmother, would you call her a wise grandmother? Yeah, I definitely would, that's how a lot of people remember her. Yeah, yeah. What do you what do you think was the wisest thing that she said and that you still carry with you today? So, the main thing that people I honestly don't remember her saying this personally, but one of the main things that people bring up a lot that she supposedly said a lot is um if you do a favor, you don't expect anything in return. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You don't ask for anything, you don't expect anything. You do a favor, you just do it with a mm-hmm. smile and that's it. So that's one thing that people bring up a lot. Uh, Yeah, yeah. You, I remember (coughs) hearing that, you know, you smile at someone, then they smile back, and it just makes things a lot easier. Yeah, it's like a ping pong domino effect or whatever. Uh, Everyone just smiling at each other. Yeah. From smiling? You never lose anything from smiling, except you might lose friendships from the people who don't like to see a smile interesting but well those probably aren't really good a friend right exactly yeah that's not a good friendship people don't like seeing you smile yeah so that's really a win isn't it yeah absolutely yeah so what advice would you give to people like i mean whether or not it's advice about getting into radio whether or not it's advice about in general like what and um, you know like tell maybe tell us about a bad experience you had that you learned from or some time that you've sure. been bad and then you <laughs> improved yourself as a person. Sure. Uh so one of my so here's one thing that I think about a lot. Don't hang out with people you can't fall asleep around. I have enough anxiety. I don't want to be looking over my shoulder when I'm with my close friends. I don't understand people's need to do stuff to their friends while they're sleeping. <laughs> So that's one. Um, let's see. What else? There's a few. Advice. 
don't be afraid to bomb. Don't if, be af- oh if you if you want to say that on the radio. Why? What? Don't say that on the radio or in a crowded theater. Oh, the word bomb. Well, I'm talking about in the context of stand-up comedy, bombing is when you do a horrible, horrible job on stage. Uh, when you, if you want to start comedy and you go to an open mic or something, you have to accept ahead of time and put your like, you might bomb. That's like the point. You know what I mean? But you know, as the bare naked ladies say, you know, there's a. One forty-three chance you might fall in love. There you maybe go. Maybe not in an open mic, but uh, <laughs> you might. That'd be very awkward. That'd be very awkward. I mean, like just you're just staring at the audience, and then yeah. you, just, you just fall in love with all of them. That would be interesting. That would be a cool a little, experience. That might be very overwhelming, don't you think? Of course. Be like, dang, all my soulmates are here in front of me, watching me bomb. But that would be great. <laughs> I. uh... Yeah, recently I, I did really poorly on stage, and there were like new faces, very pretty faces at that, and that was unfortunate because I the previous few weeks I'd done really well, but that's neither here yeah. nor there. But at least your soulmates won't um, won't mind if you imagine them all in their underwear. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's already it's like you perv. No, actually, it's an anxiety technique. So now you're being ableist. Perfect. <laughs> nice. Good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, hmm. What other things uh, come to mind lately? Let's see. So, well, let's see. Well, here, let's look at the list of questions, cause I. Yeah. Cause <laughs> I gave. Being real mechanical here, right? Well, I, I gave a bunch of. Oh yeah. Good we, answers, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think you did too, but I forgot what most of them were. That's all right. Let's story Neither my life. Neither of us are very organized, right? Story o oh my life. Oh, here we go. Yes, you are in dur- music journalism, right? Yes. And you criticize yourself a lot. You right. Yeah. What Tell was the exact it. question? Because my answer is yes. Comedy plus music plus music journalism. <laughs> Stressful, constant self criticism. <laughs> Big payoffs though. <laughs> right. 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 Um. Yeah, so why don't you tell me about some of the ways that you criticize yourself? Um, it's just like a constant feed of... Uh, wait, let's bring up the questions as well. Who's Flume? They probably stink. It's just a constant stream of um, self-criticism. Ken Jong, that's not you. No, are you looking up a doctor, comedian? Yeah, a real. <laughs> Here, I'll, I'll pull up my actual website. Oh, and if anybody else who's listening wants to be uh, interviewed, interviewed uh, feel free to go to doctorcomedian.com and um, find my list of questions. Email me at um, danielle at doctorcomedian.com. Oh, <coughs> shout out, shout out to Aaron, who's apparently listening. Thanks, Aaron. Yes. Oh, and uh, the normal show is currently from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday, so check that out. Um, so, yeah. So, am I creative? Yeah, I do music, comedy. Who am I? I'm Greg. I. <laughs> you're you? just going down the list now, aren't you? <laughs> um, what do I do? I work at a gym right now. Uh, I watch kids while the parents work out. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, working with kids is it can be really rewarding and it can also crush your soul to its very core. Kids are very blunt. They are, and I've said for a while, if you want to know the truth, if you want an honest opinion, ask a kid. They don't care. They will Or ask a very old person. Or a very old person. They've been around a long time. That's they, right. they know what they're talking about. Don't ask one of these stinking millennials. They'll they'll yeah. fluff it up. Yeah. It's the middle of it's the the area between um middle uh middle childhood and it Sounds like you're saying the Twilight Zone intro. And and late adulthood that you just you just get this delusion and then yeah. when you're, when you're too old or too you're just young, like, that's when you know. Then you're like, ugh, F it. I'm just going to tell people the truth. <laughs> um, you're going to get us kicked off the 
It's okay. I'm Sorry, student director. FCC. I do what I want. I control the FCC. No. Um, <laughs> obstacles. So, I think... Oh, another motto is, it could always be better, it could always be worse. And I mostly use that when it feels like it could be better. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Basically, it's just a... I don't know if it's corny or less corny way of saying... Uh, be thankful for what you have, even when things feel really crummy. Um, but, and I feel like I have to preface what I'm about to say with that, because I, you know, as I complain about my life and obstacles that I have faced, I want to also make it clear that I'm grateful for what I have. But, um, let's see. So, a lot of like, I was talking to someone recently about how certain effects or certain changes can affect your identity, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, and I actually, this was in my first speech for public speaking class. I was talking about how, like, you know, like I like I was born with a club foot. I have freakishly different sized legs, which mm-hmm. is really weird. But it doesn't bother me that much because it's something I was born with. So right. it's like part of my identity. But, mm-hmm. you know, I found out when I was like 20 that I had epilepsy. And that was like a weird, you know, again, it's just like an identity thing that was weird. And then like losing a testicle. That was another thing like, what? Like, that's weird. That's not me. I don't miss a testicle. And yet here I am <laughs> with only one testicle. <laughs> No more, no well, it less. Could, it could be worse. You it know, could, oh, you know, exactly. It could, always be, it could always be much worse. It could always be better. It could always be worse. Right, right. Um, so, but that's obstacles. And then, but again, you know, comedy is a good, uh, 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 what do you say? Uh, it's a therapeutic thing. So is music, you know, you get to scream into a microphone. Hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you already mentioned some creative things. You've mentioned, hmm. Do you think you're a positive person? Am I a positive person? Um, yes and no. Erin wants to hear one of my standard routines. I'm telling her, you have to text the station. Yeah, you have this to This is informal. You have to do it through the station. You have Eight, to five, do six, the three, station. four, five, nine. <laughs> Three, two, five. Yep, exactly. Anyone can ask any questions. Am I a positive person? Uh, sometimes, you know, usually I try to, sp- as corny as it is, I try to spread, like, positivity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as you can tell by my chipper demeanor. Like, I'm always, like, I always try to smile at people and I make it a point, you know, I'm usually telling people, thank you very much. But sometimes I'm in, like, a mood where I just, like, hate everyone. Like, recently I was at Royal Farms, which is a great place to hate everyone. <laughs> that is so true. And then, and I was, like, usually I just, I try to, like, just send positive energy, but I was in a mood where I was just intentionally trying to send negative energy. To, but in my defense, he was making, this is my first, I think, turkey sandwich from Royal Farms. And they're using, like, these disgusting old, like, rotten tomatoes. In your defense, he deserved it. Exactly. And I was just, like, give, I was just, like, kind of giving the stink eye. Just, like, which, to me, the stink eye is just not smiling. You know what I mean? No, oh, yeah. And, just um... anything other than a smile is automatically, I want to murder you. Exactly. And so, we got a text message from someone. Oh, we did. Huh? Yeah, so what I did think. They say? It's on my phone, Greg. Well, hold on. Um... But, but yeah, other than that, I, I, even though internally I'm probably a, a mix, I try to be positive with other people. We have a text from someone. Oh, very nice. What is it? You're say? a dork, Greg. What was your favorite stand-up routine to perform? Oh, let's see this one. Well, one thing I've been doing lately that gets a lot of laughs is I'll start by saying, like, I'll find um, a reason for people to clap. I'll say, like, man, it's great to see so many people here or something like that. And then I'll go, uh, give it up for yourselves if you're a racist. And but people are already <laughs> clapping. So then I go. <laughs> so then I go. Ah! <laughs> and then I start yelling, ah, you're all racist. No take backs. You're all racist, huh? Um, <laughs> oh 
<laughs> and so that one's a lot of fun. That, I'd rather not be a racist. Yeah. That, so I'm just going to do you. Yeah, exactly. If well, I it's too late. Psychic, They're already clapping. You no, know, if I was a psychic, then I would just know not, I would just know to scowl at you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, I played a psychic recently. That was fun. Um... So yeah, yeah. I'm a psychic because I predicted that. Exactly. <laughs> uh, what's another one I've been doing lately that did really well? Oh, I do a bit where I... This was genuinely... This was inspired by a genuine frustrating moment where I was... I don't know if my mom's listening. I love you, mom, but you drive me insane. I told her that I came out of um, surgery to have my wisdom teeth out. You know, it makes you really emotional. And mm -hmm. I started crying and I told her, Mom, I love you so much, but you are so effing annoying <laughs> since i was actually saying it but we were in the drive-thru at mcdonald's and she was asking she kept asking like every person at every window about biscuits and if they're fresh so i do a bit where i'm like this is an impression of my mom at the first window of mcdonald's are the biscuits fresh and then here's the wind here's my impression of my mom at the second window of mcdonald's are the biscuits fresh i asked for them to be fresh oh you just take the money and then here's my impression of my mom at the third window. These are fresh, right? It got lots of laughs on stage, I swear. Wow. And then recently I played a psychic. I did a show called Messages from Beyond. And I had a bit where I had this guy in like a yarmulke come up. I'm doing all these psychic readings. And he's wearing a yarmulke. And his name is Moisha Rabinowitz. And he's telling me like, after my mother died, I feel like there's so much that was unsaid. And I was like, your mother, like... She was Jewish, wasn't she? And he's like amazed by my psychic powers that I was able to figure that out. And then later I had uh, an Asian woman come up and we had the same interaction, except... Oh, oh, and then I started speaking fake Yiddish. <laughs> and, and when he goes, what does that mean? Because I go, I don't know, you should learn Yiddish, you idiot. Um, and then later I... Uh, my friend Sonia, who's Asian, I had the same interaction, except when it... First, I said she was Jewish. She goes, no, but she made me feel guilty a lot. And then we got to, the, I go, oh, she was Chinese, wasn't she? And then I get to the part where it sounds like I'm about to do a very racist interpretation of what I think Chinese sounds like. But she, like, cuts me off and says, like, no, like, don't do that. You know what I mean? Because I'm Jewish. I can make fun of Yiddish. I can do Jewish jokes. Yeah. I can't do Asian jokes. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, that's... So, um, yeah, I... Thank you so much for um, all of uh, your insight and uh, the, the information you gave us, Greg. Well, Thank you for um, having me. Yeah, so t give us your uh, website or you know, like anything, you know, if people want to comment or like say hi or whatever. Anything um, you want to, anything you want to share? So, remarks too. if you want to hear my music, which I don't play these songs anymore, but I'm still proud of them. I think my album is Banger City. Go to gregorymichaeljordan.bandcamp.com mm -hmm. and you can hear uh, my album. <laughs> um, I don't I don't think I have any stand-up online, really, but if you go to Facebook, look up Greg Goldstein, and I have these two videos that were very well-received of me harassing strangers on the streets of Philadelphia. I was promoting my show, Messages from Beyond, so I was in character as Gregory, like, L Gregory Luke Warm. And I was going up to people and telling them that I'm a psychic and giving them psychic readings. And so you can see me, like, miserably fail at trying to communicate with people's dead loved ones and things like that. I think those are very funny. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, should I, after you leave, should I try and cue up that the one standard routine? The one standard routine I got the most laughs at ever. Yeah, you're right I had after. just, I had just had a seizure at the open mic while yeah. waiting. And now I died. Yeah. Now I'm dead. Oh, you're dead. I'm dead. I just how you, died. How do you recover from that? You how just, does the comedian you recover don't. from being dead? Pff, you just laugh your way out of hell and hopefully you come back. Okay. You got to make Satan think you're good really luck. funny. Thank you. Or, or he'll kick you out. <laughs> or he'll kick you out, which is a good thing. If he kicks you out, then you get a free pass. Exactly. It's like, dang, you got you Satan angry? Of, you got kicked out of hell? That's pretty badass. Yeah. That's almost as badass as going to Malberg, the bad kid school. What if you got kicked out of purgatory? <sighs> what happens? I don't know. I guess it. I guess everyone get kick, gets kicked out of purgatory. It's just you got to figure out what where you're you going. What if you get kicked out of... And like, you're just floating you just, forever? You just, you just get kicked out of hell. You get kicked out of heaven. You get kicked out of purgatory. You must be really, in, like, very annoying if everyone's kicking you out. Like, 
you're in hell. It's like, you will suffer. And I'm like, oh, it's too hot. And it's like, oh, shut up. I can't take you. You're going to heaven. And then it's like, wow, it's so beautiful here. And I'm like, oh, the light, the light is too bright. And they're like, get the hell out of here. You're so annoying. Are you, are you just complaining? The soup is too hot. Yeah, exactly. The soup is too hot. It's like, you're literally in heaven and you're still complaining. I'm like, yeah, but the soup. I wish it the was. Soup. I wanted matzo ball. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why in the afterlife. Right, I'm great. 20 times more Jewish, but that's just how it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> Being Jewish, um, even one time, one times or two times is good. It's, it's good, good enough. enough. It's good enough. <laughs> I think I think being one times Jewish is sufficient. Though. Yeah, I mean, All once right. a Jew, always a Jew. All right. I guess. But yeah. Suppose that's true. <laughs> My All main right. advice. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for your time, Greg. Um, maybe we'll see you again. Yes. Thank you so much. I'll see you. Uh,